How is it going everybody? You're watching Visual Intelligence and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Now I decided to give it a shot uh, again for YouTube. Uh, I mean I took a took a look into the channel lately and um, it's it's like 8,000 subscribers which is a lot more than uh, what I was expecting to ever reach when I opened this channel honestly and uh, uh, I'm excited that it's still growing even though it's been like years since i uh, uploaded the last tutorial but um yeah um i mean i'm excited uh, i want to be back uh to the platform to youtube doing tutorials so we're gonna see how it turns out but um yeah so let's let's jump into the actual tutorial uh so today uh, i'll be showing you how to make this logo so i've been working uh, a lot on logo design um in the past three years and uh um, this evolved to be my go-to style whenever I want to create a brand and uh, it's something that I'm uh, kind of getting good at so uh, I thought I might as well share it on my YouTube channel which is what I'll be doing today. So uh, yeah, uh, this is um, obviously a, um, a fake company but we're gonna we're gonna try and recreate this exact logo and hopefully you learn ways to uh, create these kind of simplistic but you know stylish logos and things like that so let's create a new document so since this is illustrator um, the size doesn't actually really matter but let's go with a4 just so that we're all in the same page and if I wanted to uh, do a drop shadow or something like that we, we you can just copy the exact uh, the exact um, proportions so uh, uh, this created a, a horizontal page for me uh, which is something that I don't want and uh, in order to change that uh, you can go to your artboard tool or you can just hit alt o and this will um, bring you to, the, to, to this view basically and then what you can do is cre uh, click on that landscape mark and this will this will adjust your page to be uh, horizontal which is something that you might want to have also there's something uh, that I want to share with you guys which is uh, the fact that everything in my document is white even when I'm outside my canvas and that's something that I like doing because it allows me to uh, just uh, design whatever I want without having to be locked in this canvas uh, and the way you can do that is you can just uh, hit Control k to go to your preferences and then you can go to your um, user interface and then the canvas color you can make it at white so um, with that out of the way let's go ahead and get started so the first thing you want to do is you want to grab your ellipse tool uh, which you can do by hitting l on your keyboard or just your toolbox right here so what you can do is you can click once and this will ask you to uh, enter the width and height of your circle and uh, what you can do is um, let's do 100 just for the sake of being 100 is, is, is a nice round number so let's do that and this will create a nice circle for you what we want to do now is we want to duplicate it so what you can do is you can just copy and paste it Control c Control v and this will paste it in a, in a very awkward way and then you can go ahead and try to line it up um, and uh, well, that's not the way I like to do things so what I like to do is to actually hold alt and then click and drag and this will create an, a, a copy of uh, your circle now uh, I'll be using the help of the these red uh, magenta type of lines that are called the uh, smart guides and if you don't have that you can go to effect um, sorry you can go to view and then make sure smart guide is actually checked uh, something else that you can do is when you're holding when you're clicking and holding you can hold shift as well and this will constrain with the actual uh, angle to be a multiple of 45 which is something nice uh, to help us align this exactly um, with the other circles which is something that we want to do so now that we have three that's all we need um, at least in this axis and then what we can do is we can uh, highlight all of them and then click and drag and duplicate them once again make sure they are touching 
each other so if I zoom in we can see that they are, they are exactly touching if, if they are not touching uh, or they are not snapping just go to view and make sure snap to point is also checked if you're using a software that doesn't support snap snapping or whatever you can just use um you know reconsider your life choices and maybe join the illustrator clan and um even if you can't afford it you know uh, if you're just learning there are multiple ways to get the illustrator wink wink so um yeah uh, let's go back to our main subject here well, the next thing you want to do is you want to use a very nice tool in Illustrator that is the Shape Builder tool. So if you click that, what you can do now is you can merge shapes together. What we want to do with this tool is we want to just draw our shape and, and that's all basically. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, get rid of the extra circles that we don't need. And uh, there we go, we have the basic shape of the logo. So the next step is to pick the colors. And I don't want to just um, um, color pick that from the first logo because that's not going to give you any learning value. So what I want to do is I want to uh, pick colors from scratch um, in order to show you kind of my thought process in choosing colors and things like that. And maybe you can. Um, you know choose different colors and apply the same logic that I go through and come up with different but beautiful effects um, so yeah so um, what I did is I clicked on the outline and then clicked on the none um, no fill option and then we want to go back to our fill and then we can click on the gradient and if you don't have this um, window you can just go to window and then uh, click on gradient and it will show you this um, panel where you can just click on the gradient and it will show and it will apply a gradient on your shape make sure it's selected by the way all right so we obviously don't want this color right so uh let's let's give um some colors so what i want to do is i want to go to our, my swatches panel and if you don't have that you can also go to your window and then uh, search for a swatches so from the swatches we can click and drag colors and the colors that I want to pick for uh, this style let's go let's go for a different just just to just to prove a point here uh, we don't have to do uh, this color even though it's uh, it's kind of beautiful and if you want this file I can share it with you as well and uh, you can just steal these colors for other projects as well I don't mind that really all right so let's do a different one for the sake of argument here so let's pick a um, pistachio kind of a green color and then uh, the other side let's go with a yellow color all right um, if you if we go to our gradient tool or click G on our keyboard we can uh, click and drag and this will um, alter the angle of the um, of our gradient which is something nice uh, so we can personalize that more um, I like this uh, angle but you can go with whatever um, angle that pleases you the most so I don't actually mind these two colors but let's go ahead and uh, alter them a little bit uh, so what I like to do is I like to go from a, a somewhat um, cold color and uh, uh, green is, is arguably a cold color but I want to make it more bluish in a, in a way so I like to go from um, cold to warm and um, this is uh, warm enough but I, I, I find this color to be kind of boring so what I like to do is maybe um, increase the uh, yeah so what I did is I increased the brightness overall of the of the of the color and uh, yeah I think I think this looks 
pretty nice maybe we can play around more with the green color as well maybe i want a little bit more greenish so maybe we we were back to our starting point but uh, somehow this satisfies me more than the the um the plain old uh, old color so this actually looks pretty nice uh for my liking but um if you see in this in this file there is actually a kind of shadow over here that signifies that this this white space is actually something that pops out of the screen or that has some depth to it which is um, an effect that i honestly like in this logo and uh, this kind of nuanced ideas is what makes it logo pop from other different logos so let's go ahead and implement that um, nuanced kind of shadow in this logo so the way to do that is uh, i want to hit l again for my ellipse tool and then what i want to do is i want to just draw a circle it doesn't have to be you know exactly in the center it could be in the center if you wanted to and uh, that's totally fine i don't think it has to be in the middle um, yeah i don't know so yeah um so what i did is i uh, picked um a green color for that you can pick um uh, the green that you used for the cold part of this gradient and then maybe you can just make it a, a little bit darker and then what you want to do is you want to go to effect blur and then gaussian blur and then if you click preview you can see how that looks and then you can play with the radius i think 70 works fine for what i'm trying to achieve but you know try different angles and then decide for yourself so what we want to do is we want this to only be visible inside of this shape right and uh, the way to do that is we want to click on this shape Control c to copy it and then click away Control f to paste it exactly in place and then if you hold shift and then select the circle it will select both objects if you right click and then make a clip and mask it will clip the layer underneath inside the layer that it that was on top which is this shape that we copied and um, just like that we have a shadow now it does not look exactly attractive yet and um, the reason is it's it's too opaque and uh, one way to deal with this is if you go click on your white arrow tool uh, this will allow us to select the shape inside of our clipping mask if we use the black arrow we will not be able to select that so let's go with the white arrow select the shape inside of the clipping mask and then what we want to do is maybe increase decrease the opacity to 50 percent okay this already looks a lot better uh, but what's weird about it is that um, it's it's perfect around this this edge which is something that you don't usually see and uh, if we assume that the light is coming from this side like if we uh, if we assume that this is the light let's draw some shapes right if we assume that this is the light then the shadow needs to be a little bit down right a little bit on the bottom of the of the thing we want to we want to shade right so uh we uh, select the white arrow click on it and then you know play with the with the position a little bit maybe increase the opacity a bit and you know depending on your color you may need to uh, alter these colors a little bit more or less and uh yeah that's something you want to experiment with so let's delete these so yeah this is basically um our logo it looks absolutely stunning in my opinion uh, it's simple and it's nice so what's left to do is um you know just polish uh, final polish add some text and things like that so what i want to do is i want to select everything Control g and this will group everything together so uh, uh, that's useful and then i want to decrease the size a little bit to give to give me more space to work with 
and then what I can do is I can bring my type tool which you can do by hitting the letter T on your keyboard and then you can write some some stuff let's say collab this time even though this is a I think this is a, a Python thing I'm not sure but yeah I think it's fine if we use that for uh, educational purposes yeah uh, this looks um, absolutely fine for me except the font looks terrible uh, myriad pro is the default font that illustrator gives you but you, you obviously don't want to keep the default so what I can do um, a font that I like is uh, Roboto which is I think it's the Android font or something like that um, and I, I like it I like it very much uh, it's simple and it's stylish and classy uh, you can go also with um, you can also do Futura it's also some trendy font these days or you can you can go with plain old um, Helvetica uh, I don't mean plain old Helvetica is a legendary uh, font that works that just works so um, yeah I, I will go through the photo for now and uh, call it a day uh, what I like to do is give some contrast in my text and uh, a way to do that is maybe to um, alter the weight in the second part of the logo which is the dot co just because it's not that important but also to give some contrast um, make it more you know stylish and stuff uh, another thing that I like to do is use a different color than just dark color so what I can uh, go with is um, a very dark gray but and that looks great in my opinion but if you use uh, black it just it just looks weird and old and uh, you know it doesn't match the style of uh, what we're trying to achieve uh, yeah so one mistake that I want you to avoid is some people you know that they love um, maybe they love their colors and then uh, what they can do is uh, something like this or um, you know they try to give a uh, color to the text as well and that's not a good idea unless your text is actually your logo when you have a word uh, word mark you can do that but when you have a, a symbolic logo um, I suggest you just go with a plain old you know static color for the text and uh, this will make it look um, incredible in my opinion so um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to have done this tutorial. Um, I'm glad I'm back on YouTube. Um, uh, if you want to support me, you can just uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel or uh, you can also go on like our Facebook page. Uh, we used to have a website and then, you know, I lost my um, YouTube partnership and so I have no actual YouTube income and I thought it, it is just not possible for me to actually you know uh, invest in a website uh, but if it grows um, um, you know I get back my partnership and work something out maybe we can uh, create a website and all our projects and you know tutorials and things like that in there so uh, yeah um, this was visual intelligence thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next time